Now the next thing I'm going to read to you is also uh, the last thing I'm going to read you. Uh, it's a short story, so it'll take a while, so not much variety I'm afraid. Uh, it's also the opening story and the closing story uh, in my latest collection. Don't ask me how that works. Um, but I should read the, uh, the first one. Uh, it's called Bob and Jane, a fable in two indistinct parts. Bob and Jane loved each other. They knew this because they frequently told each other so. I love you, Bob would say. I love you too, Jane would say giggling. Please don't ever leave me, Jane would say dolefully. I won't, Bob would say, tightly grabbing hold of her. I need you too much. Yep, Bob and Jane loved each other. And they knew this because that's all they ever talked about. <laughs> <laughs> they sat on the grass in Hyde Park, the hot August sun blazing in the clear blue sky, the scent of rose and honeysuckle blossom carrying to them on the warm wind. Do you know what, I love, what it is I love about you? asked Jane. No, said Bob, suddenly looking serious, for this was a conversation about their love and thus of great import. <laughs> it's your strength, said Jane, stroking his flabby bicep. You're so big and strong, I always feel secure with you, you know, I always feel safe. For more than nasty monsters and things, added Bob. They liked to talk in baby voices. They did this a lot, because they loved each other. <laughs> yes, that's right, said Jane, snuggling into his chest like a little fluffy rabbit. Ah, my little fluffy rabbit, said Bob. He may have been boring, but at least he could spot a metaphor. <laughs> he cradled her in his arms as she nuzzled under his jaw. And do you know what I love about you, asked Bob. Jane nuzzled more actively by way of response. I love the way you're so fun and natural and genuine. I feel so relaxed when I'm with you. Jane looked at, up at him with her big brown eyes and smiled before hugging him tightly. She liked what Bob had said. No one had ever called her fun before. <laughs> Bob, Bob liked what Jane had said to him. He'd never been considered anyone's tower of strength before either. <laughs> I love you, she said. I love you too, he replied. Mm. Bob and Jane watched the scene around them as they lay on the warm grass, holding each other's hands. Nearby they could see other couples talking, kissing, drinking beer, simply sleeping next to each other. And Bob looked down at Jane and thought how beautiful she was. She reminded him of herself. We're so lucky, said Jane. I mean, look at all the other couples here, and none of them love each other as much as we do. We were destined to be together, weren't we? We'll always be together, said Bob. He smiled at her and gave her a little peck on the cheek. Other people can't understand how we feel about each other. She smiled and gently kissed his ear. If we ever split up, I don't know what I'd do. It'd be like losing an arm or something. Bob smiled. That lovely gap-toothed, tarted smile that reminded Jane so much of Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, nothing will ever split us up, he said. We'll never be apart. Bob and Jane's friends used to say they were joined at the hip. Of course, they haven't seen their friends for a year now, but they didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> because they loved each other. Bob and Jane were tired. Being in love really takes it out of you, after all. And still warm from their joint shower, they snuggled up on the stuffed cushions on the sofa taking sips of red wine. Bob rested his head on the cushion as the world ambled on outside. The cushion smelt of burned oils, Egyptian musk and lemon. They smelt of Jane. Bob loved the cushions. I got a letter from Jess yesterday, whispered Jane. Really? To be honest, Bob wasn't particularly interested. Jess had nothing to do with them. But then he remembered that maybe Jess had said something about their relationship, so it could be important. <laughs> what did it say? Jane scrunched up her nose like a little hamster as she tried to stop herself from sneezing, and Bob gave her a big hug. Oh, I can't remember, Jane said. But do you know how she dressed it? Bob shook his head. She dressed it to Bob and Jane. See, everyone thinks of us as a couple now. Just one big blob of love jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he meant it, but he used a jokey tone in case even Jane thought it was too sad. <laughs> Jane didn't think it was sad. She thought it was one of the most lovely things Bob had ever said, and Bob only ever said lovely things. They kissed and then lay back on the sofa watching the birds and squirrels in the trees opposite. Look at all the little natures dancing around, said Jane. Little nature, said Bob. Gah. <laughs> <laughs> Emma was his first love, and as such, if Bob was honest with himself, his ideal for a girlfriend. He tried to convert his other girlfriends into becoming Emma clones. <laughs> <laughs> tried to create the same in-jokes, repeat the same little trips at weekend breaks. And unfortunately, none of them had ever been highly convincing until Jane. He loved Jane. Jane didn't know about Emma. To be honest, Jane didn't know herself. She'd been at Roth when going out with Darren and had tried to be check off with Kafka when going out with Crispin. She had won Mocha Reese and gone on precious marches when seeing Mark and smoked masses of dope and listened to Floyd when going out with John. Now she was going out with Bob. Now she loved their in jokes, their little weekend breaks, and their quiet Sunday afternoon walks. 
she looked Bob. They stopped walking and stared into each other's eyes. Bob caressed Jane's cheek and tilted her head towards his hand. Then, almost crying with the sheer joy of it all of being young, in love, and with the person you love, they kissed. A shrill, high-pitched scream split the air. Bob and Jane turned and saw two people, a man and a woman, screaming and running down the street away from them as fast as they could. As they ran to the corner to the next street, Bob and Jane continued and shouting, It's horrible! It's horrible! Someone do something! Well, what's all that about? asked Jane, looking up at strong, manly Bob. I don't know, said Bob. Probably just jealous. They can't handle seeing true love. Maybe seeing us made them realise how shallow their own relationship was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely thing to say, said Jane. But then again, Bob only ever said lovely things. They continued to stroll down the street, Bob savouring the hint of Jane's perfume over the aroma of cut grass. They stopped walking and kissed each other again. They really couldn't help themselves. Indeed, so engrossed were they that they didn't hear the tranquilizer dart whistle through the air. Bob and Jane fell to the ground as one, their lips still touching despite their own unconsciousness. When they awoke, the first thing they thought of was each other. They hoped. Are you all right? Are you sure? I don't know what I'd ever do if I lost you, they said as one. Die, probably, said a well-spoken but monotone voice from the other side of the darkened room. Who are you? asked Bob and Jane. Fascinating, said the man. Who are you? they repeated. Oh, please, excuse me, I'm forgetting myself. I'm Dr. Kokoschka, and I'm overseeing your case. Our case? asked Bob. Yes, you see, it's really the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Well, what is what do you mean? What do I? Well, look at you. Bob looked at first himself, then Jane, her big brown eyes, her soft skin, her glossy hair that chose just that moment to flop over one of her eyes. He got it into a perfume of the smell of antiseptic. Jane looked first at himself, then Bob, his square jaw, and defined cheekbones, his broad shoulders, that tension in his muscles as he sat and ready to protect her. Bob and Jane shrugged their shoulders. What? Kokoschka, a lonely looking middle aged man who'd obviously never been in love, stood up behind his desk, his slick back hair reflecting the meagre light. What? I mean, what? Just look at you. Are you blind? Love is blind, replied Bob. But you weren't born this way, asked Kokoschka. We were born to love each other, said Bob. But can't you see something rather unusual about the two of you? Well, yes, of course, said Jane. And what, pray tell, is that? No one loves each other as much as we do, she said. <laughs> Kokoschka sat down in his chair of leather and polished gold and stared at them, stroking back his hair with an open palm. He doesn't seem to quite understand. He stood up and pressed a switch, a square light the size of a cupboard glowing on the far wall. On this, he placed a piece of black celluloid, which Bob and Jane instantly recognized as an x-ray. Look here, he said, a complete merger of the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. Two hearts beating as one, said Bob and Jane, looking into each other's eyes. One leg gone, joined into a composite limb. We'll always walk the same path, two destinies intertwined, said Bob. Jane thought rather romantically. <laughs> Three cerebral hemispheres, one completely merged, said Kokoschka, jabbing the x-ray. Well, that's one of the great things about being in love, said Jane, realising you have the same opinions and going to think like each other. But you're not individuals, screamed Kokoschka. You turned into some kind of fleshy blob. <laughs> Even your lungs are growing to each other. It's, it's, I love the air Bob breathes, said Jane. <laughs> but you have to be separated for your own good, said Kokoschka, pulling the x-ray away from the wall. You can't live like this. What's the matter with you, said Bob? Have you never been in love? I bet he hasn't, whispered Jane. Rubbish, there's no such thing as love, it's just the character of two weaknesses. <laughs> Bob and Jane stood up, outraged at his suggestion. Kokoschka continued. How can anyone truly believe there's such a thing as romantic love? It demands the impossible, the absolute, the scar of fire, inexhaustible springtime. Life after death and death itself transfigured into eternal life. He glared at them, exasperated. Bob and Jane looked into each other's eyes and they shrugged their shoulders. Yeah, so it's about right. I love you, Jane. I love you too, Bob. You have to be separated, said Kokoschka, taking the string from his desk, even if it must be done by force. No screen, Bob and Jane, lunging forward as the bob arm clenched its fist and laid Kokoschka out. The poor man, said Jane, as they escaped the hospital. I feel so sorry for him not having anyone to love. Bob squeezed her hand tightly. That's why he loved Jane. She was always thinking of other people. Later that night, Bob and Jane lay snuggled up in bed, candles flickering in the corners of the room, the aroma of the oil burner filling the room despite the open window. What a strange day, said Jane as she caressed Bob's gut. Has in the world become an ugly place that two people can't even be in love without everybody thinking it's strange and unnatural? That's because there's so many sad people in the world, said Bob. Jane kissed his chest, her soft palm moving down to his inner thigh, and a six-chambered heart missed a beat. 
She moved up to kiss him, cartilaginous skull and flexible thalamic tissue stretching as she did so. He caressed her waist and moved down, his calloused hand passing over the three-socketed pelvic girdle and down the twisted calcified femur. She moved round on top of him, ligamental hinge in the pelvis closing, skin stretching, in turn that ext external intercostal muscles extending on their ossified rib hinge. And she sat on him, te teasing him with her beards. Bob and Jane started to pant, three lungs filling with air, joint, joint bronchioles oxygenating the blood as it was punched from Bob's aorta through to Jane's iliac artery. Bob loved Jane so much he wanted to be a part of her, and he always felt frustrated that the simple sex never let him get as close to her, as into her, as he would like. He picked her up by her hips, shared carpet stretching as he did so, and a small gasp came from Bob and Jane's lips as a joint hypothalamus ordered sidereific glands into activity, and Bob and Jane started to sweat. Good, thought Jane. I like it dirty. <laughs> Despite their shared brain, they didn't really know each other at all. Bob and Jane heaved and thrusted on the crisp, warm sheets, and they looked into each other's eyes and smiled as they made the two back to beast. <laughs> That's it for the first half, folks, so please come and enjoy yourself in the interval.